God's yeah, anointing. Right. God's anointing is, is totally different. And and in the forty years that we've been married, uh, God has helped us to grow and helped us yeah. to be consistent in our church attendance and, and in our giving and and our work for the Lord. And I'm grateful for that. Mm-hmm. He brought us a long way. Yes. I mean, He brought us a long way because I was your typical teenager that did the kind of things that teenagers do. And I watch people driving down the road, and I think often to myself, well, that was me when, when I was, you know, 19, 20-something. Uh, I drove that way. And I had a fella who told me, well, I built this truck up, and I took it out to some place where there was this 100-foot hill or whatever it was, but he said it was like a 70-degree angle, and I hit it at about 80 miles an hour to see if I could get to the top. He said I almost got to the top, and then it started, started turning sideways. And it rolled over and over and over. So that big truck that he made was totaled. On, I said, how old were you at that time? He goes, I think I was 19. I said, mm, there you go. It's, it's, it's logic. And sometimes in the spirit of the Lord, as we begin to grow older, we make a little bit different decisions uh, as we mature in the Lord. When we're young and we're on fire for God, we can say some some pretty bold, and, and, and I, I don't want to say uncaring, that may not be the exact word, but when you're on fire for God, you, sometimes you stick your foot in your mouth, uh, and, and you say stuff, and it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe I should have been a little t- more tactful uh, with that presentation. I went back to look up some information for today's sermon, and I went back to 1987 and pulled out one of my old sermons, and it's like, Oy vey. Man, I had a hate to sit under me because I was I was pretty straightforward and there was no sugarcoating. We don't ever need to sugarcoat the Word of God. No. Never need to sugarcoat the Word of God. But today, I want to endeavor to share with you a little information out of John chapter 12. And we're going to call it today Hosanna. So we're, I know we're already past Easter, and we're past the Passion Week, but we are now in the Passion Week. We have now arrived at the beginning of the week before Easter, on the Sunday when Jesus went into the temple, and all the people laid the palm trees before him, the branches, and they cr- cried out, Hosanna. They said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray that today you would bless your word, that it would, Lord, get into our hearts and bring change. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You've heard the parable, the sower went forth to sow. And and Jesus explained that that parable as the seed that was going to be sown is God's word. And so many pastors today are thinking that their little cute stories are the seed that's going to be planted in people's hearts. You know, I think we should focus more on God's Word. We should focus more on the Scripture. And the beauty of the Scripture is is that I can read a verse and it may mean something to George that's different from Felix. Same thing. Now, Scripture is never to be given for a, a personal interpretation. You can't make up scripture and say, well, this is what it means. But you can use it for personal application. God may take one word out of a Bible verse, and that one word may be just the word that you hear. Yeah. You may be thinking about faith. I wish my faith was strong. I wish I had stronger faith. And the preacher gets up and preaches, and he reads Hebrews 11 now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and the only thing that you hear is faith mm-hmm. faith hey there's faith god can do that through his word and so that is why we go pretty much verse by verse by verse by verse in the scripture because that way we're learning the bible and hiding it in our hearts mm-hmm. so hosanna this is this is where we begin John chapter 12, verse number 12, and it looks like I might be able to uh, cover 13 also here, but this is what it says. Randy's going to read that, okay. and uh, you can read it nice and loud. Okay, or I can read it nice and loud. 
On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took bread and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So the people were proclaiming Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, the king of Israel. They were declaring him and welcoming him in. That same crowd, by Friday afternoon, was no longer saying that. So when they came in and they thought, okay, here he comes. He's going to take care of the Romans. Let's, let's just, let's put palm branches. This is the guy that everybody's talking about. This is the one who, who raised Lazarus from the dead. This is the guy who heals blind people, makes the lame to walk, takes care of leprosy. This is the guy that has raised other people from the dead. This guy, there's a sound that comes out of heaven every now and then, and it's like a voice, and it says, I am well pleased in him. This guy is coming to town. And so they greeted him. Yeah. Hosanna, a Hebrew origin. Yasha, 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 Na. Yashana. Or, as we say today, Hosanna. Hosanna. <laughs> it's pretty much a, 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 like hallelujah. It's an international word. People understand what Hosanna. And it means, oh, save. Hosanna. An explanation of adoration. Hosanna. They were crying out, save us. Oh, save us. Who did they need save from? Were they thinking about the salvation of their souls? I, I, don't, I don't think so. They, they thought... That the Messiah was going to come, and he was going to come as a political leader who would overthrow the Roman government at that time, and, and everything was going to be good, and they were going to be delivered. Well, when they made the statement and they called him king, that gets the attention of Rome. See, because when, when Rome came in and they took over a place, often they would replace the, the, the ruling king or the ruler of the land was somebody who was voted on by the people because it was like a Senate. I mean, Rome, Rome started all the politician stuff that we have with, with the Senate and the voting, and, and that's how it worked, and so they would replace it. Often, I don't know if they manipulated it, but they would end up with somebody who they could manipulate. So they could not get in front of Rome and say, this is our new king. He's going to be king. They literally said at one point, we have no king but... Caesar. They declared Caesar to be their king. Even after they tried to trap Jesus one time. And they said, is it lawful for us to, to pay tribute to Caesar? If Jesus had have said, yes, it's lawful, he'd have been in trouble. If Jesus would have said no, then he'd have been in trouble. Yeah. So they were trying to trick him into to, to an answer. Like, it, it's a lose-lose situation for that question, they thought. But Jesus said, bring me a coin. Held up the coin or whatever. Somebody goes, whose image is on that coin? And they said, Caesar's. He says, well, give to Caesar what's Caesar's. <laughs> so it's like, ah, oh, man, we thought we had them that time. Well, they're, they're going to make a proclamation later on that they have no king except for Caesar. These, these, they didn't want to have Jesus as their king. The religious people of their time were not interested in what Jesus had to say. And that is a lot how today's society has become. Mm -hmm. So I told you a couple weeks ago, a recent poll said that only 50% of, of America now is believing that there is a God. That's astounding. And we were, we were pretty much a, a nation that was founded on, on, on Christian beliefs and values. We valued the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. We thought, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. Don't make any graven images. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Put God first. We're good things to have in people's lives. But now, you can't put those at the courthouse. We don't want those laws at the courthouse. We should. What a different world it would be. What a different world it would be if people took a day off to, to worship God. I mean, I just want you to think about that worshiping God on, on what they had as the Sabbath, the time to worship God, is time to set aside for rest. What a different world it would be if we all rested. Randy went to the grocery store this morning, 
as she was getting those pastries over there, whoever was behind her. What time was it? It was 20 till 9. 20 till 9. Guy behind her wanted to buy some beer. The cashier said, you can't buy that till after 9 o'clock. I haven't heard that in a while. Do you remember when you used to not be able to buy beer or alcohol in, in, until after 12 o'clock? Do you remember when places were closed on Sundays? Yeah. That yeah. businesses were closed because that was the Lord's Day? Yeah. yeah. In Israel on Saturdays, there's a lot of places that close down because they're not supposed to do any work. Mm -hmm. We need to sometimes just take a, a, a rest in our working in the things that we do. Mm -hmm. Well, they called him king. And that was a problem for them. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. I don't know much about this. I don't know where he found this donkey, or the donkey being prepared for him, or go get this donkey. I mean, we know that he did send some people over there. And in another version, another gospel, we said, go tell them that the master has needs of this. Now, this is what it said in Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Amen. Look, young uh, people still ride donkeys today. People, people in places they still they still use that donkey as a, as a, a beast of burden. When I think of that, I think of a colt, and you think of a, a little horse, and you think, how could that little horse carry a person? Well, it, I don't know. If it's a year old, it's probably pretty much. I don't know how long does it take for a horse to grow to. I have no idea. Uh, uh, over a year. Get about 30, years old. Yeah, donkeys, do they grow faster or something? But but Jesus rode in on the donkey. Just like it said in Zechariah 9.9. 9. He fulfilled a prophecy that had to be fulfilled mm -hmm. to say, your Messiah is coming. And when he does, he's going to enter into the city and he's going to be riding on a colt, the, the fowl of a donkey. And he went and he rode in on that very thing. Now, they didn't sit there when this happened and say, hey, look, Scripture's being filled. Look at that right there. If This is what it says. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Well, so they didn't understand at first. They didn't understand prophecies. There were prophecies and things that had to be done by Jesus while he was here. There were things that they would say, the Messiah is coming and this is what he's doing. This is how he's going to be born. Mm -hmm. This is where he's going to be born. This is where he's going to travel to. These are the things that are going to happen to him. This is how he is going to be stabbed in the side, that his bones will be broken. There are prophecies after prophecies of the Old Testament that had to be fulfilled for him to be the Messiah. And he fulfilled them all. Amen. Amen. I mean, you talk about proof of who he is, and he is who he said he was, yeah. is those fulfillments. Amen. If he, was, if he was crazy, he was also a, a mastermind because he made sure that things were fulfilled even after he died. When they stabbed his side and the blood and water came out, he was already dead. Mm -hmm. It's not like he said, hold on a second, guys, before I die, I just got to get some instructions out to you. Somebody, when after I die, needs to stab me in the side because there's a scripture that says something about that. No. God knows what he's doing. Amen. We may not always understand what the scriptures say. Amen. But when the Holy Spirit comes in Amen. and touches your mind, Thank you, Lord. It'll help you to understand Hallelujah. what's going on in God's Word. Amen. It will bring God's Word alive to you in a new way. Yeah. Just as I talked a couple weeks ago about being an inheritor for an inheritance, that when you become 
the heir to somebody who's giving you an inheritance, it changes your whole attitude about what the inheritance is. Now, I know that was a, a, a long circle round of, 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 of logic here. But if it was somebody else's, unless I knew that they were going to give some to me, it's like, well, good for you. You know, I'm happy for you. That's good. You know, well, the guy down the street, he's inherited 20 Jeeps. I don't know the guy down the street. Let me go make friends with him. You know, <laughs> he don't need no 20 Jeeps. You know, uh, we really don't need four, but it's, uh, we have four Jeeps. We have five grandkids. My plan was to give a Jeep to each one of the grandkids when they turn 16 that they get a Jeep. That, that was, that's the plan. So I'm one Jeep short of, uh, of that, uh, that goal. But uh, somebody asked me last week, <laughs> and this hurt. <laughs> Out of the, you got four Jeeps, how many of them are running right? <laughs> None. <laughs> N none, none really. I mean, all, all they got problems. Oh, well, this is it. When, when God works in your life, and the Holy Spirit comes in, He will shine light on His Word. Yeah, and it will help you to memorize it, to learn it, to lean on it, to live it. This is what God's word can do for you. John saw Jesus as the king of kings. They saw, here comes the king, the king of Israel. But John saw something later on in the last book of the scriptures that we have, the book of Revelation. John had a vision of Jesus. And this is what it says. In Revelation 19, and I'm going to read 11 through 16, I want you to see how John's finished vision of Jesus was. He was there when he rode in on the donkey. He was there when they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. He was there. But he had, as he got older and more mature in the Lord, an incredible vision of Jesus. And I saw, this is John, heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Amen. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Amen. And he had a name written, that no man knew but he himself he had a name. I, I just want you to see about this, this, this name, this person, faithful and true, in righteousness. He's going to judge. His eyes were like a, a flame of fire. And his head were many crowns, not just one crown, but many crowns. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. It's the blood. And his name is called the Word of God. God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Jesus is coming back. Yes. He may have left as the lamb uh -huh. that was sacrificed who often didn't even open his mouth in his own defense, who took it. He could have called those armies down mm -hmm. and said, wipe out these Romans. I'm not fixing to get crucified. These people are doing me wrong. Let's take care of it. He could have said, let's just like Elijah, <laughs> let's just bring fire down from heaven and we'll just burn them all up. But instead, he left here as the lamb. That was necessary. That was the fulfillment. He died for you. He died for me. Amen. So that we could have eternal life. Amen. But he's not coming back as the lamb. He's not coming back as, oh, I'm just bringing the lovey, lovey gospel. He did preach a loving gospel. Yeah. But he also preached a stern gospel. 
But when he's coming back, he's coming back as the King of Kings. Yeah. And the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And out of his hand goeth a sharp sword. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he that treadeth out the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Man. That sounds like Jesus is coming back. Yeah. And when he comes back this time, he means business. He's going to take care of business. We have to think sometimes that it's not our job to do these things. It's not our job to bring the judgment. It's not our, go our job to rule them with a rod of iron. Amen. It's not our job to, to be wrathful toward them. Amen. Regardless of what happens in life, in the end, Jesus will take care of it. Yeah. Too often we want to take it into our own hands. We need to leave it in God's hands. Yeah. Amen. And he, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Not just the king of Israel. Right. Not just a king, but the king yeah. of kings. There may be other kings, but he is the king of all the kings. Amen. There may be other lords, people, lords, I mean, but he is the Lord of lords. Amen. He is far more than just some, some prophetic teacher or rabbi or a zealot from the past, from 2,000 years ago. He is far more than an influential person. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And when that day comes, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. I bow now yeah. voluntarily. Amen. I bow now because I acknowledge him for who he is. He is the Lord of lords. But there will come a time when everybody will bow. Amen. He is our king, and he is our Lord. Amen. If he's your king, does that mean he has rule over you? It should. It should. You should, you, you should acknowledge him as king. You should show him reverence. You should take the things that he says and... and do them. Yeah. But some people say, well, yeah, I believe uh, Jesus was a good man. He was more than that. He's our king. Yes. He's our Lord, and he's coming back. How can you make him your king and Lord? Now, I want to ask this question here, because I've got less than probably 10 minutes or so. But maybe Jesus is not your king. Maybe, maybe he's not your Lord. There are two trains of thoughts in, in, in Christianity. One is called Lordship Salvation, which means Jesus is Lord. And then there's another train of thought called Easy Believism. Lordship Salvation is make the Lord Lord of your life. Give him your life. And they'll say, well, you can never really do that because there's probably doors inside your heart that you just don't want to open to him. Well, we're not perfect. But I ask God in my heart, if I've closed any doors to you and, I, and, and I've seared my conscience in anywhere, open that door. Yeah. Shed the light on it. Let's get it taken care of. Amen. Amen. Easy believism, on the other hand, is just believe and you're saved. That's it. All you got to do is just believe. Just come on down to the altar and pray a prayer with me. And no matter where you go or what you do or what you say, you'll be saved. That's, that's, that's too easy. It's like... Well, then, in order to justify that, well, what if they came to the Lord and they served God, but then later on they left the church, they, they left their spouse, they went back to drinking, and they went back to doing drugs and stealing and they ended up back in jail? Well, they just must have never been saved in the first place. They were never born again. No. No, they just got overwhelmed and there was no brothers or sisters there to help them through a tough time. Amen. Temptations will come. Yeah. We may be weak, but we don't need to be wicked. Amen. This, is, this, is, this is making Jesus Lord of your life. You can't buy it. 
Christ's death purchased eternal salvation. You cannot give enough money to a church. You cannot give enough money to a charity. You cannot stand before the throne of God on Judgment Day and say, but I gave to Goodwill. I gave to United Way. I gave to help the homeless. I, I, I dropped off packages at church. You cannot buy your way into heaven. Amen. Yeah, it, th there was a church at one time that had a place where, where your loved ones would go, and they, they weren't out of there because they weren't, they weren't living a really good Christian life. But so when they died, they went to this kind of intermediate place. But if you gave enough money to the church, the church would, would be able to get them out of that place, and then they could go to heaven. It was called purgatory. Uh, sounds like a scam to me. Uh, you. you can't purchase it. So right off the bat, I want to tell you, you cannot buy your way into heaven. You can't sidestep it. Yeah. The saved are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone. Amen. You cannot take the easy way out. You can't find your own way. We were watching somebody who was down in Australia and the roads were flooded, and they were trying to stay off a flooded road, and there was a giant flooded part in the middle, and they couldn't tell if the creek had washed the road away, so they decided what they would do is they would pull over and try to drive off in the rough area and get around it. <laughs> it looked hard, but it wasn't long before that truck was sitting down on its frame and axles because they had broke through the hard crust and gotten down into the soft, miry muck. Well, that's what happens when we try to find another way to get to heaven. Yeah. We can get stuck up in some kind of my, miry muck that will drag us down. And eventually it will leave us short of our destination. Right. These people were like 500 feet from the place that they were supposed <laughs> to get to. <laughs> About 200 miles out in the middle of nowhere. But their destination was 500 feet away and they were stuck. Well, they eventually did get out. But you can't sidestep it. Amen. You can't make up your own way. No. You can't get some bypass. Well, no. If if there's hard times in, in your walk with the Lord, you can't say, no, Jesus, I just want some easy times. Because you had it so easy. <laughs> Think about that. You can't earn it. Mm -hmm. Sinners cannot earn divine favor. Amen. Your, your divine favor as being a sinner, you can't earn it. It's not how many times you come to church. It's not whether you give your tithes, although you absolutely should give your tithes. It's not about how nice you are or how much you pray. Mm -hmm. It's not about these things. Or how much you listen to worship music or how much you read the Bible. It's not any of those things. You cannot earn it. No. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God. Now listen to, the, listen to these three words not of works lest any man should boast it says salvation is not of works amen you can go knock on all the doors that you want you can ride around on your bicycle with a tie and a little blue name tag if you want to do that but that's not going to get you into heaven amen that's not going to get you divine favor from god it's it's something that you can't earn grace grace g r a c e we have often used to describe that word as God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. Jesus paid for it. Thank you, Lord. You can't earn it. You can't gradually work towards it. How often God requires no prep preparatory work or pre-salvation reformation. That's a, that's a mouthful to say. I just want to get saved and I want to give my heart to Jesus and I hear you talking about it all the time but when, when, when I, every head is bowed and every eye is closed and I'm thinking about it I, I just start thinking about how I need to get some things right in my life first and, and after I get some of these things right then, then I'll come to Jesus don't wait you got no promise of tomorrow you don't even got promise of tonight you don't know are you right with God? You need to be right Amen. now. Amen. And it's not something that you can prep for. You do it because the Lord calls you to do it. Yeah. And you love it. Yeah. Too often, people try to try to find their own way. 
He can't find it elsewhere. Eternal life is a gift of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Not by Buddha. Not by Muhammad. Amen. Not by Charles Taz Russell. Amen. Not by Amen. Joseph Smith. Not, not by George Washington. Amen. By, not by great men like Martin Luther King. No. Not, not by any of these people. Except for through Jesus. Amen. Well, when people are trying to get their life right to come to the Lord, it's, it's like getting the, the cart before the horse. A horse pulls that doesn't push. And the Holy Spirit pulls you. And pulls you. And pulls you. I don't know if you're like me, but before I before I responded to that altar call at church that day, God had been working with me. We can't work our way toward it, but God does work for you. Yeah. God does put you in the right place at the right time. Amen. God does stick your heart every now and then, and you feel you feel the weight of the sin. Yeah. You feel the weight of living ungodly. He begins to work. Believers are saved before their faith ever produces any righteous works. Mm -hmm. You're not saved because you work, and if you work hard enough, you'll be saved. But you will probably work after you're saved. When you love God and He's your King and He's your Lord, you want to do His will. Yeah. Amen. You can't get the cart before the horse. Romans 10, 8 and 9 and 10 <laughs> says this. But what saith it? What's 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 the what what's the deal? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Paul uh -huh. talking and presenting the gospel. And this is his altar call. Okay, everybody, listen up. Some people are sitting here and they're saying to themselves, well, I really would like to, to go to heaven. I would really like to have that relationship with Jesus. I'm not right with God. Well, there's a word. It's God working in your heart. Mm -hmm. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thank you. You understand that? Mm -hmm. It's here. You confess that there. And then you're saved. Uh, amen. You receive salvation. Deliverance. You're not saying Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the wrong, the wrong person or the wrong ideology. You're now saying, oh, save me to the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Amen. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That is why pastors and preachers often do every head bowed and every eye closed. And if you need a relationship right with Jesus, I want you to slip up your hand. And people slip up their hands and no one's looking around. And then they say, if you slipped up your hand, stand up. And then that person, some, some don't stand up. Some who raise their hand won't stand up. And then after they've stood up, he'll say, come down here and we're going to pray together. And he says something and you repeat along with him. That's when it's coming from your heart because you've already, you, you walked. You said, I, I, I want it so bad mm -hmm. that I'm willing to humiliate myself and go stand up in front of all the people in this church and acknowledge that I am a sinner. Amen. That's a hard thing to do for a lot of people. Uh -huh. But when you go down there and you pray with that pastor and that pastor prays that prayer and, he, and you pray along with him, that's when it's coming out of your mouth. That's when it's coming out of your mouth. It's going from here out here and you're making a public profession that you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected from the dead and that he did the things that he did so that you might receive eternal life you're saying i can't do it i can't earn it 
I can't buy it. I can't sidestep it. But I can accept that Jesus paid for it. Amen. Jesus did it all. Thank you, Lord. Won't you make Jesus Lord of your life today? Make him your king and make him your Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, you know who is listening today, Lord, that in their hearts, they, they, they didn't feel right. That they feel like, Lord, they need, a, they need help from you. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they would pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you did for me. Come into my heart. Forgive me of the things I have done wrong. I accept what you did on the cross as full payment for everything I've ever done wrong and will ever do wrong. I put my trust in you. In Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. 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 Maybe that's the first time you've ever prayed a prayer like that. If it is, please let us know. I mean, it's it, it's important to, to that's that's like the fourth step. The first one's raising your hand. The second one's standing up. The third one's coming <laughs> to the front. The fourth one is testifying to people. Amen. Tell people, tell somebody. I asked Jesus into my life. Be prepared. First day Some people may not like it too much. <laughs> yeah, lose friends. Both Randy and I were told that oh, it's just a fad. L literally, that's what my roommate told me. Uh -huh. I accepted Jesus. Woo, I came home so excited from church. I, I asked Jesus into my life. And, 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 and he saw that we started going to church. And within a couple weeks, I asked Randy to marry me. And we set the date for a couple months later, a few months later, to get married. And I was 19 years old. It's not going to work. It's just a fad. You're just going through, you and Preston, just going through this stuff that you, you, for a while you were gonna be rock stars, then you were gonna be artists and musicians, then you were gonna be an animator, and, 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 and now you're gonna be a Christian. Do you know it's stuck? It's Great stuck God. for over 40 years, it's stuck. Amen. I'd rather be stuck in the mud with the Lord Amen. than going down a highway that leads to hell. Amen, the wide road, yeah. That's the wide road. Uh -huh. I'll take the narrow path. Praise Thank you God. for joining us. Randy, come up here and, and, and help me close out the service. Thank you guys for coming down to church. If you uh, do not have a church or maybe you haven't been to church since COVID, maybe, maybe you just never went back to church and you're watching online. If you're in the area, we would love to have you come down and join us for church. Amen. If you're not in the area, make the drive. We have somebody all the way from Pennsylvania joining us in service today. And... and, and and we got eggs. Hey, George brought some farm fresh well, eggs. They're good for breakfast. And they're good for breakfast because I eat them all the time. So I like eggs. And tomatoes. And, 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 and the, the tomato plants are not doing too well. So I don't know what's happening though. But thank you for joining us. We would really, we're inviting you to come on down and join us. As far as offering goes, uh, we have a, a box in here, but that's not going to help people that are online. Uh, we don't take up the offering because yeah. we just we it's just have there. it. We've always just we're just trusting the Lord that people would put stuff into the box the way that they're supposed to, yeah. and I, I don't take that wrong. <laughs> put my foot right in the mouth. Uh, but online you can give. Good There's a God. link right below. It says online giving. Yeah. It's on the YouTube channel. It's on the Facebook page. And you just click on that, and you can give right through Giveify, and yes. we appreciate it, and God will bless you for that, because that's what God's Word says. Yeah. If you never read Malachi chapter 3, maybe crack <laughs> it open sometime. You might get convicted. You know? And we also do the morning devotion. Morning devotion is live at 7 o'clock, but it's online afterwards, so you can watch it anytime. As long as I'm here, it's live to both, both, both things at the same time. Facebook and YouTube. Facebook and YouTube live. We're... <laughs> We're figuring it out, but uh, that, that's how it works. If not, it'll the YouTube one will be a little bit later during the day. But thank you for joining us. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you tuned into the Morning Devotion. Thank you very much for joining Amen. us. Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again I say, Rejoice. Rejoice. See you, la see you later.